So, good morning, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> this is the title of my thesis, Information Search in Web Archives. So, the web is the largest source of information in the world, and every day people add uh, uh, many information. Many of this information is important. The big problem of the web is that the web is ephemeral. Here I have three studies that show exactly that. For instance, after, 80, uh, after one year, 80% of the documents become inaccessible. So many of the information that we are adding to the web today, and some of this information is important, will disappear after one year. <clears throat> Fortunately, uh, and due to this problem, several web archiving initiatives uh, have been created since 1996. Here we have a world map with the locations of these initiatives in green. And at the moment, there are at least 68 initiatives spread by 33 countries, and together they archive more than 17 petabytes of data. Uh, <clears throat> I helped to create one of these initiatives, the Portuguese Web Archive, where I conducted, uh, I used to conduct part of my research. <clears throat> so, we have uh, a lot of initiatives, we have a lot of data. Uh, what is the problem? The problem is that it's hard for the users to find the, the information that they want in, in these type of systems, in web archive information retrieval systems. So the objective of my thesis was to study these problems and try to find the, the solutions. <coughs> uh, I divided the contributions and uh, my thesis in three parts, three main parts. First, I tried to understand the web archive information retrieval systems. Then I tried to understand uh, the users of these systems, and only then, after I understand, understand the state of the art, the functionalities of these systems, and understanding what the users need, and seeing if these functionalities uh, are the best tools for this type of users, I, and identifying the limitations, then I focus in trying to improve these systems. And here, I have uh, several research questions addressing uh, these problems. Uh, <clears throat> to understand the web archive information retrieval systems, my methodology was to conduct uh, two surveys, one in 2010 and the other in 2014. Uh, we did uh, questionnaires. We, we sent this, uh, these questionnaires to, to the web archiving community through, through email to, to res uh, people responsible of the, these initiatives in forums. And we also gather uh, public information related with these projects. <laughs> And we created a Wikipedia page, <coughs> and since then, uh, uh, many of the people in this area updated this Wikipedia page. So this is a very good resource with the uh, information that has been currently uh, updated. And we used also this for <coughs> in the second survey, so we use all this information to find a lot of interesting um, findings. Uh, this, this, uh, these findings <coughs> are, for instance, enabled us to, to characterize the state of the art. And uh, web archives provide mostly two types of service. They provide the URL search service, like uh, in the sc screenshot that we have here of the Portuguese web archive, where you can submit a URL and you receive a list of uh, all the versions of the pa uh, page archived over the years. And this technology is based mostly in the Wayback Machine. The problem is that it's difficult to, to remember the URLs, or many times the, the user don't even remember the URL. Uh, the, f the full text, um, then there, there is other type of service that's a full text search service. Uh, the user, um, <coughs> uh, well, this is similar to, to a web search engine where, where the users submit a set of keywords and then uh, submit a set of keywords, and then they receive a list of documents ranked by and expect that the most relevant appear in the first position. This technology is based mostly on Wasin extensions, such as Netrex and Solaire. And the problem of this technology is the, the poor relevant rankings. This technology works very well for small collections in the order of millions of documents. But when we scale to uh, collections of the order of billion of documents, like in the Portuguese Web Archive, this technology do doesn't, doesn't work very well. So it's very difficult for the user using these two types of technologies to find the information that the user wants. I tried to understand also the, the users. Uh, for that, I used three data collecting methods, uh, laboratory studies, online questionnaires, and search log mining. 
And uh, I found very interesting patterns. For instance, uh, I characterized the, the user's information needs. And as you can see here, uh, the, there are uh, mostly three informational needs. And uh, users, what they want the most is, is to, they have navigational needs. They want to, to see a web page in the past or how it evolved. There are also other information, need, uh, other, uh, information needs. The, the, the big idea here is that the search engine technology is optimized for different needs. It's mostly optimized for informational needs, while the, uh, the, the web archive users have mostly navigational needs. So there are a difference here, so the technology needs to, to be optimized somehow. Then uh, there are also some, technology, some needs that are not supported by current technology. Like, for instance, users want to compare uh, versions of pages and see what changed over time. They want to see how a page evolved. So these are functionalities that need to be created in the future. The good news, the good news is that uh, many of these information needs may be supported by a high quality full text search service. So the users are used to the full text search, uh, so, sorry, full text search services. They prefer this type of, of system. So I focus my research in trying to improve uh, this type of systems. How I'll, I achieve this? Um, I analyzed the, the related work in, in this area, and I saw that previous studies show that temporal information has been exploited to improve information retrieval systems. This is especially a very hot topic uh, now. And I also saw that temporal information can be extracted from web archives. Uh, so combining these two ideas, uh, I, this led me to, to posit my hypothesis that the state-of-the-art web archive information retrieval systems can be improved by, explo by exploiting temporal information intrinsic to web archives. So this means that I can extract temporal information from web archives to improve the results of these same uh, web archives. Uh, I followed two approaches to, to exploit the temporal information from web archives. One was to create novel ranking features. And my intuition was that uh, persistent documents are more relevant for navigational queries. So if I have a document that exists for 10 years, uh, probably this document is more important than the document that was created just today or uh, has just one year of lifespan. And I also create a novel ranking framework. So the, the typical technology creates a, a generic ranking model to rank documents this, uh, uh, exactly the same way independently of the time. So th they use the same technology to rank a document of 1996 and a document of 2000 and a document of 2014. But the, the characteristics of the web evolved a lot since 1996. So there are a lot of variations. So for me, it makes more sense to create a specific model for each period instead of having just one model to, to rank all the documents of the different periods. Uh, so I, I, to create the, the temporal ranking features, I consider, I analyzed the, the, the data, and I found correlations between the, this persistence and the relevance of the documents. I measure the persistence with the lifespan of the document and with the number of versions. And as you can see here in both graphs, the higher the, uh, the lifespan or the more versions I have, the, the more is the correlation with the with the relevance of the document. So documents with higher relevance tend to be more persistent. In, the, in, <clears throat> in my case, I measure with lifespan and with the number of versions, and then I model this information to create uh, new uh, ranking features. I also created a, a new ranking framework, extending a little bit of the learning to rank uh, framework using the temporal information. So my idea was to create a, a ranking model for, uh, for each period. Here you can see, I imagine that we have three periods, one between T1 and T2, then T2 and T3, and the last between T3 and T4. So I create a model for each period, and <coughs> what I, I do is that I learn with the maximum information from this period, for instance, for, uh, for the first model. And as the distance increases, the temporal distance increases, I start learning less with the, with the information of this document. So I, I, I learn less with V2 than with V1, and then I, le I learn less with V3 than with V2. And 
finally, after I creating the, the models in, in this way, I combine the models by minimizing a, a global loss function for the results of each model uh, be comparable in the end. Uh, this is a uh, formalization of the problem, and this is the methodology that I used. I created a test collection <coughs> based on the Cranfield paradigm. So all the characterizations and in, in, in the studies that I did to understand the, the systems and the users enabled me to create a representative test collection. And I created a test collection with, with the with these parts, the corpus, the topics, uh, uh, relevance, ju judgments, and metrics, which I think are, are very representative of web archive users and uh, of these systems. I also created a data set for, uh, to, uh, for a learning to rank where I, can, uh, where I could e experiment and test my, <coughs> my framework. So the, the results and validation of my thesis. Um, <coughs> Uh, here I have results of the state of the art and of the typical learning to rank technology. So here I have technology that is used in web archive, uh, such as Lucene and HUX. And in the right side, I have technology based on the typical commercial web search engines. That, and as you can see here, so the, the main idea here is that the, the results of the, the state of the art are very poor. So when we just and the typical technology used in web search engines, I can improve considerably the results here, 30%. Uh, when I add uh, to this technology my temporal features, the ones that I use, by, which I was able to create using the information of the web archives, once again, I, I can improve significantly the results. When I compare the same, the same algorithms, for instance, random forest with and without the the temporal features in each metrics, I have significant improvements. Same here again, I have a 10% increase. And finally, when I uh, use my, my temporal ranking framework here with the temporal dependent models, uh, I can also improve significantly the results. Here I, here I have the, the results of the typical learning to rank technology where I create just one model. Here I have the creation of two models, then four models and so on. So four models here for a time span of a collection of 14 years, it means that I have a model for each three and a half years. And by doing this, I can improve by 5% the, the results. So these are a significant improvements that I achieved with the temporal features and my temporal ranking framework. These are independent techniques, and when I combine both techniques, I achieve in a better result. So to conclude, uh, during my thesis, I try to, to, to answer to all the questions that I showed you in the beginning. Here I, I have some of these answers related to understanding the systems, the users, you know, to improve the same systems. And this is a list of public resources created during my thesis that, that are available, and a list of the selected publications related with this thesis. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, May I sit? Thank you.